Kuchik, a Yid TV, empowering you. Read at uh, the More Genetic Resources Center that, and the Data Bank has imported 255 in calf uh, superior dairy breed, breeding cattle, meaning that. That is the, uh, um, with the installed capacity of 2 million liters. This means there is a lot of production, but marketing is a challenge. That's what I meant. 2.8 billion liters annually, but the, the collection centers there are 483 with the installed capacity of 2 million liters. A very huge gap, meaning that, yes, as much as we pursue the issue of production, we need also to look at marketing. Because I know demand influences supply. So, um, I want really thank you so much. Um, I, I, in fact, these heifers I uh, imported from South Africa, not very far. Um, yes, blended learning has a key advantages, and of course there are disadvantages. But um, we need to work hard to ensure that it is it will act at least bring in the component of the practical aspect. How are we going to manage it? Uh, that is something that, um, that should be considered. And I hope it will be able to address the issue. That's why the, my colleague was talking about simulation. That is the way to go if the systems can allow. Because that is a key technology itself. You've been seeing here struggling with technology. And um, with this branded learning, especially online, you are dealing with the entire world. How sure are you that all those people that are trying or to learn from what you're talking about are on board and they are getting all these facts? So uh, I want to, I don't want to lay, uh, to, to delay. Uh, because time is not in our favor. But I want again to think, take this opportunity to thank you. Thank you for bringing all these experiences here. That is what it is supposed to be in the knowledge economy because information where we are is an asset. You cannot survive without information. It's about information sharing. It's about knowledge creation. It's about creating awareness that will take us to another level. And with these few remarks, I want to thank the teams, the partners, the organizers, uh, Faculty of uh, Interdisciplinary Studies. Thank you for this uh, wonderful work. Thank you for bringing all these members to see our main campus should have taken it somewhere, but at least they have known Mbarra University of Science and Technology. So with, this, with um, these few words, I want to thank you and declare this workshop officially open. Thank you. Thank you. 
Thank you very much, um, Mr. Huntington Odongo. Uh, all protocol observed. I'm glad to be here. My name is Martha Choshaba Tunamasko, the academic registrar and uh, a participant today. So you're very welcome to Mbara University of Science and Technology. Thank you. Thank you, AR. Uh, I don't know what I can say. Dean, you will allow me to take, make some brief. I think, uh, Madam AR, we are here discussing blended learning process for training our students and also interacting with the community, the farming community around us. And the people who are here are, are our fellow academics from, from Ethiopia, Kenya, and the Netherlands. We are here with the uh, stakeholders, that's from the Ministry of uh, Agriculture, Ministry of uh, Education. So we are here, we are looking for a solution, how the blended learning approach or methodology that we are promoting can be taken up by all of us who are here, so that tomorrow we all get the benefits as a country and as a a community of East Africa or Eastern Africa. That's basically why we are here. Yeah, with that, I was just uh, telling you, we are trying to reorganize the program so that we we meet the our time limit. So uh, our presentations are not going to be the way we were, you have it on the program. We have tried to fuse to fuse the three presentations of the Ugandan team into one. But uh, the different partners will come and give in their experiences as the presentation is going on, so that we save time. Two, after that we would expect, uh, after the presentation of, uh, of the, the Ugandan team, we are uh, requesting the, the Netherlands team our, the architects of this uh, program to try to share with us also briefly how it is done in the Netherlands. And then after that, I think we share with our other partners, that is Kenya, Kenya and, the, and the Ethiopia. Then we shall have a, a, a plenary, a plenary session. And the plenary session, there are two quick key things we are going to discuss. One is uh, what we discussed in the morning, what was presented in the morning from uh, the Netherlands team who are in the Netherlands, they are not here with us, on the software that we are using, that's the DDA platform. Then two, we are going to discuss our relationship as uh, TVETs and universities with uh, the private sector when I talk about the private sector, it is about, uh, it's about the farm. We're in relation to student internship. Student internship and all placement. So these are the, the key things that we need to, we shall focus on when we go to the plenary. And after this, I think in the, before we leave, I'll request our team from the, the our academic registrar and other university management team that are here and the representatives of the other partner institutions that are here with us to agree on the way forward. And basically that's what we are going to do. I think I will uh, hand you over to my, to my uh, colleague. Okay, thank you. I wish you all the best in the discussion. Thank you, Mr. Dr. Huntington. Okay, I, I think you will be coming to, to, to do the overview of the presentation. That, that is what, what I'm told by 
Peligro. Learning. I know this is what we have skipped. We have skipped a lot of things. Why we have skipped the issue of the project overview, you already have it in your wallet. Yeah? For those who have not been interacting with it, but we, the overview of the project is in your wallet. Just a pager. We make a we made a summary of the project. Yeah. Just a pager. Yeah, the project brick is there in your wallet. So I would request uh, Peregrino to come on and share with us what, uh, what he, he, he has. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Uh, once again, my name is Peregrino Tumsinjize. Uh, I'm the animal science. Uh, I'm the animal science uh, lecturer at Mbara University of Science and Technology uh, in the Department of Environment and Livelihoods Support Systems. That's in the same faculty of interdisciplinary studies. Uh, uh, for the branded learning that uh, we embraced and were able to take on the pilot, the three institutions, MAST and Chera and Ruentanga, uh, we tried to, to look at how do we uh, go on and uh, start this site in terms of uh, how is branding, branded learning good and how can we integrate it in our uh, existing uh, curricula? So branded learning as an approach, we look at it as taking on uh, enhancing the practical learning, uh, moving away from the entire theoretical uh, focus in classroom, uh, interaction with the students, uh, integrating the use of videos, uh, photographs, and uh, then audios, and the students, of course, conducting these practicals under the guide uh, of the lecturer or the instructor, and then later uh, do it uh, by themselves. Uh, we also uh, have the materials, these are shared on the platform. So eventually, the peer learning comes in that the students are able to visualize what they have been doing in the field, and then they can interact as a group, put up a screen, discuss on this, and then try to enhance each other, make sure that the ones that have not gotten it right, they are able uh, to move on it well. Uh, again, we are looking also that it will help us in upgrading the, the assessment. Uh, uh, because when the student is out in the practical, sometimes, especially in the internships, uh, lecturers you visit once in a week or twice in a week, but and then you are able to see it when you are still at the back and you are not yet at the internship site. So by the time you go, you have a fear of what is taking place in the learning environment and you can go and improve on this. Uh, also, it, uh, we are seeing bread and learning trying to improve the efficiency, of course, in the assessment, because you have evidence on the platform and you are able to check it and, uh, has submitted and how you have assessed the platform. They are skill best. It all depends on how you orient them and how you integrate them in your existing uh, curriculum. Yeah, of course. So, but all this, much as it is good, it requires us to think about some resources that we feel are very, very important. Uh, the software, the ICT facilities, name it, the phones, the tablets, uh, and the like. All these are critical if we are going to enhance uh, the branded learning. On the other side, 
uh, the physical facilities, for example, minimal physical facilities are important on the side of institutions. For example, the, the farm facilities that will enable the students to be able to do uh, the practice. Uh, and if this is, cannot be attained at the institutional level in terms of the farm, then we need to have the farmers around us. So how do we do it? I'm not going to go into the modules. Uh, I have the diary instructors, uh, because myself was to oversee what the diary instructors have been doing. So they have been able to take through the students through all this. Uh, I want them to be the ones to talk about what they have been doing with the students. Uh, but my case is to tell you how have we done it as a must for uh, on the DDA platform. Um, one of them that uh, was also selected to do uh, the validation. Uh, some of the instructors in Chera were part of the team in developing the modules with the team in the Netherlands. Uh, so actually we also have the Rinyankore version that we have also we tried to validate uh, which is supposed to be for the farmer training uh, then we said how do we start we cannot develop uh, a separate entity of the modules the river because we are an institution we have what we follow so we looked at our curriculum we looked at the courses under the program of Bachelor of Science uh, in agriculture, livelihoods, and farm production, uh, uh, 2021, with the pilot students, they were doing farm animal production and also animal health and disease. So we looked at the uh, platform, which are those modules that relate to these courses that we are doing. So we now looked at them and tried to match what we have in our curriculum and what is there. Then we only adopted the methodology of presenting to the students so that we have more of the practice by the students themselves on farm, on the must farm, but also Chera and the Ruentang also using the community farms around them. Then students were able to learn hands-on, take videos, and then upload them on the platform. Then the instructors mark them, uh, give comments, they improve. So this is how uh, we were able to do it. On the side of must also, through the, the sharing, we realized that we had a time that we were going into reviewing our curriculum. Uh, and when we reviewed our curriculum, it moved from Bachelor of Science, Agriculture, Rivals, and Farm Production. And we now have it as uh, Bachelor of Science, Agriculture, and Rivals. And we are happy that National Council uh, was able to uh, approve that. Yeah, and uh, in that, we looked at how do we enhance the diary aspect. So we took up more, uh, many courses. We unpacked the farm animal production, the animal science that are here. If you talk about animal production and management, it's the whole world of dealing with all these animals. So we said, what do we do? So we had to take up the diary uh, modules. Uh, so like we were able to look at uh, have a course on animal nutrition and feed technology. This is now animal nutrition for all the other species of animals, but you are talking about dairy, pigs, and the others. So the dairy aspect now, I would now send it to the dairy instructors that were trained under the branded learning and handle that. Then we come in together in the assessment, uh, in the practical assessment and also the theory. We also introduced the milk and meat technology module so that it will help us to handle the very addition at the end of it all, both for meat, for beef, and the dairy uh, animals. Then pasture production and range management was another course that we brought on board. Uh, all these are tailored on trying to enhance both uh, dairy and other species uh, management in order to enhance productivity. So that's how we had to integrate the thinking of branded learning in our existing curricula because we couldn't change it uh, per se because of the uh, branded learning that we are embracing. So at this material juncture, uh, allow me to invite Daniel, who was one of the instructors. Uh, of course, he's from MAST. Uh, and then the other instructors uh, from Chera, I think was Robert. Robert, are you here? Yeah, uh, that's an instructor in Chera. 
Then Bonnie, that was another diary branded instructor uh, in Chera. Then we have Loy in uh, Ruentanga, she's there. And then uh, Annette. Then at must we also have Joab, who is not here. You are in the grip of the students when they were at the farm, the one who was putting on the hat. He was trying to guide them, uh, of course, taking the video that we were able to watch here. So this is how uh, we moved. But we have also gone ahead to train other uh, instructors in the branded learning who have finished the course. Uh, this is me and our farm manager, who is also uh, part-timing trying to lecture our students. Ivan is not here, he's sick. Yes. So this is how uh, we are moving so far. So can you present the courses that you went through and how you engaged uh, the students? Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much, Mr. Peregrino. Uh, I'm Daniel Mumza, and like Mr. Peregrino has said, I was one of the instructors that participated in the piloting of the Dairy Delta Teaching Platform. Uh, these are some of the modules uh, that we looked at. We looked at the golden triangle, we looked at the anatomy, heat and cold stress, metabolic problems or metabolic diseases, under which we looked at bovine fatty liver syndrome, laminitis, uh, rumen acidosis, abamasum displacement, and milk fever. Uh, this is the mode of teaching. Uh, the mode of teaching was practical based where students, like Mr. Peregrine said, we emphasized hands-on teaching where 70% of our teaching was hands-on and practical. Then after we had classroom experience and online engagement. Here on practical and hands-on skills, or hands-on teaching, students would be taken to various farms, uh, including the university farm, uh, ha have experience, practice on various assignments, where they took videos, audios, pictures, and made presentations, which were uploaded on the Dairy Delta Academy for assessment. So after assessment, uh, sometimes students would have in class or class experience where we would play various videos or audios of students explaining what they did in the field and during this students were capable or were able to learn from their colleagues. It was highly engaging and students were so much encouraged uh, being given the feedback from the, from the coach and most of them would actually for us the coaches didn't spend, didn't utilize, spend much energy because students themselves, they were teaching themselves by looking at what their fellow students were doing for us what we could do was just to give small feedback and improvements in some areas. Then online engagement like I've said uh, here, we were using the DDA platform uh, where the, the, the Direct Data Academy had several modules and there are
on various assignments that we had given them. Um, then we had inclusiveness. Uh, it gave students of different capacities and potentials to study and participate in learning. Uh, it was flexible uh, because uh, students could access the notes at their own free time because the notes or the, the theoretical material and the practical material was uploaded on the platform and during their free time they could go and do some of the assignments but also on the side of instructors uh, the instructors you didn't need to be in the classroom all the time at their own free time they, they could go to the platform and access the accounts of various students and look at the assignments they have uploaded and provide feedback. Then it also reduces on cost of supervision for internship. Uh, both at the side of lecturers, institutions, and students. Uh, because here students can always or were always uploading what they are doing at the farm. So it, does, it didn't need the lecturer or the supervisor to go directly to the field to see what the students are doing because students could do it and upload it on the platform and then a lecturer accesses it and provides feedback to students. Uh, then another one, of course, like we said, it is highly interactive. Uh, this helps improve confidence and practical skills. Since, like we said, 70% was majorly practicals. It helped to boost some confidence among students on various practical activities rated in daily management. Um, these are some of the challenges. Uh, one is COVID pandemic uh, along the course of implementation uh, our major, um, our, our major farm of focus was the university farm, but but after COVID came, students were had to go home and couldn't access the farm. But this one was, was not so much of a big challenge because of the way the academy itself works. Because we could meet students online, and we tell them to improvise and use the farms within their vicinities. So in actually, this one helped to get bringing his experience, a student from, let's say, the Western, bringing his experience, and we shared. Only that, uh, like fine tuning, which was supposed to be done at the university farm because the student, all the students were not around, that one we didn't get. Then poor internet. I think this one you've experienced it practically here even today in the morning, sometimes the internet connectivity, strength and quality may not be all that good to support the learning process. Like uh, you conducting a lecture or a student is, uh, is providing, is giving his views or we are running, then there is breaking on and off of the students. This one was a challenge. Then there was also high transport costs. This one was incurred, it being highly practical. Of course, we had to take students to various farms, have hands on skills and experience. But some farms are quite a bit different from the university, and taking students like twice a week, uh, it may be a little bit expensive in terms of, of transport costs and maintaining students. Uh, while they are doing practicals. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, maybe, I don't know if one of the coaches who participated in the training has something to say, uh, but someone is reminding me that time is not our best friend. So I thank you so much for listening to my presentation.
listen from uh, uh, Chiera Agricultural College. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I always like uh, talking so that you can clap for me. So I was worried when he said it was time. So thank you, Mr. Dong. Now, when we started presenting actually what we prepared together, I remembered a few things. One, that as uh, Peregrino said, we selected these modules basing on our curriculum. Now, for us, we are following a UBTEB curriculum. Now, I realized that actually at the end of the, that curriculum, they tell you the kind of skills, the kind of practical skills you're supposed to impart to students. Relating to these modules on the DDA, actually, all the modules were in that line. What did we learn from that? That actually, we have had a very good curriculum, which we have not been following. Yesterday, we moved with this team to Kabare, and uh, a farmer challenged us. That we have always sent their students who have a lot in the head, nothing in the hands, with no skill. But again, when you look at our curriculum, everything is well laid. What can help us? This kind of approach. So we have learned that, and we are moving on. Two, that actually, you know, we are teaching diploma students. And I'm being honest, that uh, sometimes we feel we know more than them. So we have to impart everything. Now we have learned that these people can learn on their own. And uh, for you who have been doing it, you may see this as a simple thing, but I'm telling you, as teachers, we are suffering. Thinking we know everything, we have to look for everything, yet these people can look for it on their own. We have learned that. And two, uh, three, that online learning is possible because we have never done it at our college, and this project came at a time when we had COVID. We were at home. These people continued learning, but of course, those who were in the pilot only, then that means we can extend to others if this is uh, adopted. And uh, I'm not surprised that these days when uh, our experience here, like uh, this COVID, I'm just being honest, times that we have limited time to deliver the curriculum. Now, we are in class forcing, but here someone saying, but you see, we can do this in the evening online. So this thing is really approach can help us in your new approach of uh, practical-based assessment. Because uh, I'm just wondering, you know, they are, we, are not, we are always, uh, we, are, we can always error. But uh, the, 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 the experience is that if there is always a problem like in the marking, a student can come and ask for remarking. Now in the new way of assessing, if a student wants to come for a remark, if he is remarking, of course this hasn't gone without challenges because we need infrastructure and that is a very big cost. But again, when you run a cost-benefit analysis, you find that the benefits are more because our target is we want to produce a skilled graduate who is going to serve our communities. That's a very big benefit that we should focus on other than the cost of the ICT. So as chair, this is what we can add. Thank you very much. Thank you, the, the uh, participant from chair giving us uh, their experiences. Uh, we'll be hearing from Ruyutenga. Do you, have, do, you, do you have representative from Retenga? Shall we clap for them so that they come here? 
Ah, good. <laughs> Thank you, MC Ovrade. All protocol observed. I'm Loy Chembawazi from Rentanga Agricultural College, but that is just an assumed name because we shall soon be, but for the meantime we are Rentanga Farm Institute, but in a few years to come we shall be an agricultural college. And uh, actually, the presentations are enough, elaborate. But as you can see in one of the presentations, we are talking of our blended learning being inclusive. So I was worried if only the male counterparts were to present and the female has not represented, I think our visitors would imagine that this uh, learning favors only the male and leaves out the female. So it's real inclusive, and not only does it uh, favor, include equal participation uh, between the males and the females, also the, the, the disabled. I usually don't like using that word, disabled but uh, some persons of concern actually i think that would be a bit polite they are persons of concern but as you can see in the field it's easy for someone to handle some aspects on management uh, feeds some some disabled people are included provided there is the right gadget and I think part of the facilities, like one of the, the requirements, I think we shall have to include uh, inclusive facilities so that our counterparts also are favored, are included during the training. And one last emphasis I think I have to add to my colleagues, and of course this one leans on the assessment and evaluation part. I know if we don't talk about assessment, Madam Allen there might think maybe we are not assessing. Uh, she's my friend from UBTEP. Ours actually is competence and skill based. And uh, I'm sure if you were to really present to us, you would really tell us that there are many protests there from the students, talking of missed coursework, maybe my practical marks were not there, and sometimes actually they are required to repeat. But with our recorded uh, audios, videos, I'm sure even a, a, a candidate or a student, there is no need of him traveling to Kampala to go and confirm. The assessor is a master of retrieving the videos, and when someone is complaining, maybe you undermarked or overmarked, the evidence is there. And that is why there is that element of competence based training and assessment. And to us, and uh, yeah, with competence based, I hope we shall be in line, on spot, and uh, the ministry, I think, it will be easy for, for you people to incorporate and give us more on the guidelines. The interest of time, I beg to stop at that. Thank you. We again thank all the country presenters, but I'm told that we're having also student representatives. How about if we recognize them? Can you stand up? the student representative. So, shall we welcome them? Thank you, thank you. So, uh, so I, I think, you see, uh, according to the program, uh, 
were expected to handle the experience from Netherlands also, especially experience of farmers in Netherlands. The group from the Netherlands will be sharing with us the experience of farmers in implementing the blended learning in Netherlands, in Europe. Media has requested me to inform you that the, those who can all have internet, we are having this progr program going on live on the Exit TV and the YouTube page and, and the must, uh, must uh, Facebook page. So you can be following it up if you're not getting us here. Thank you. about people is that they make life very complicated. I don't know why. But that's a stupid thing about people. Because in my opinion, everything is very, very simple. Blended learning is about a mix. And it has to suit you. If you don't like blended learning, don't do it. Because your students will know it. And you can use small steps. Just change it a little bit. And then you know and you see it in your students that they will change. Um, I used to be an old-fashioned teacher. I talk a lot. You can give me five minutes, ten minutes, one day, two days. I keep on talking. Um, but now I have that I have to let my students talk. Let them do the work and let them find out. What we do, what I do in the Netherlands, sometimes, for example, I have to learn them how to bandage uh, a horse. I don't teach them. I just give them a horse, a lot of materials, I say, go do your job. And they, then they are afraid and shy, and they just don't know. But then they are instantly motivated because they think, hmm, that's not good, I don't know. And when you teach them later, then they are listening. You have to motivate your students in the beginning. And I always explain my students why. What is the benefit of this subject? If they don't know and don't see the benefit and what it's used for, they become lazy, they don't care. So always motivate your students. Uh, blended learning is a mix and it has to suit you. So some trainers like this subject, that subject, this kind of training, it has to suit you. So I will never tell my colleagues, you have to do this, this, or this. No, pick up for yourself what suits you. All right, 
So students first always. Students are the reason why we have a job anyway. Sometimes my colleagues are complaining about our students and then I say, we have a perfect school. It's a pity that we have a lot of students. They take a lot of time, they make a lot of problems, but hey, that's our job. If you can handle your students, get another job. All right. This is something about the platform. Um, I put print screens because I was not sure about the internet. Um, this is also something we use in the Netherlands. So it's and in China and in Africa. So it's everywhere. It's all there are two parts. Um, there's a part for the students and there's a part for the coaches. So we go to the blended learning. You can click on the tile. You already saw a little bit from Johan this morning. It's not working very properly. Um, but what we do in the Netherlands, we send our students to the farm, just like uh, Perugino showed us we do it the same way. Let them make a movie. Let them show the movie to each other. Let them discuss. They know a lot. And if you see something, you can have a discussion about it. And when you make a discussion, that's how you learn. Um, if I just telling stories, 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 it's a waste of time. They have to figure it out themselves. Sometimes when I have to teach about diseases of cows, I tell my students, all right, in two weeks, you are going to tell me all about milk fever. You two, in two weeks, you are going to tell me all about mastitis. And they have to dive in the subject. They have to make a presentation for the whole group. And when you make a presentation, you are assured that you are knowing what you're talking about. But that's how you can learn. So there are multiple ways of learning. Blended learning. Blended whiskey put a lot of good stuff together and you have a perfect whiskey. It's the same as blended learning. And it's not rocket science. It's just do your job, which you are doing for years. Add a little bit of blended learning. And if you like it and your students like it, add a little bit more. It's additional. And one thing about the cost, and I'm an entrepreneur myself, I have my own veterinary clinic. Sometimes it's a lot of money, but that doesn't mean it's expensive. It's a big difference between expensive and a lot of money. And sometimes you have to invest money in your students, in your future, and the investment and of your return of investment will be there for sure. And sometimes we think it's difficult or it's big problems don't think in problems. When I have to teach a very difficult subject, I always tell my students the first thing, I said, there's a big, big secret. This subject, everybody thinks it's difficult. It's not true. It's very, very easy. I will prove you. And then they have a totally different attitude. So you as a coach, as a teacher, has a very important role in motivating, stimulating your students. And this, who should be able to train their students in a proper way, but they can't do it themselves. And if you can't do it yourself, you cannot train your students. So that's also what we need to do, is train our colleagues, our teachers. These are some examples of blended learning. Um, go on. Uh, one back, please. So this is... You go to the style of blended learning in practice. You see the movie, and in this movie, somebody's telling you about this assignment. Then there's a Word document, and everything is written out. And then you have to hand in your assignment. And it can be a poster presentation, it can be a schedule, it can be a movie, a blog, a vlog, whatever. I last saw a movie from a student from South Africa, and she was telling about the body condition score of a cow. And she was walking around in between the cows in a barn, explaining where to look at, um, what the body condition score is. It's perfect, within two, three minutes, happy students, happy cows, 
in between the cows, in the barn. You have to feel them, smell them, be careful a little bit, but that's the way to learn. I can learn my son, I can give my son a book, how to make pancakes. I say, read it, do it. It's the waste of time. I invite him in the kitchen, I show him once, he can do it himself. And he can. All right. These are just a few other ones, you can move on. Okay, now we go to the teacher platform. Um, this is my platform. Um, we can go to there. Or not, sometimes. All right. Can you continue? These are my students, and some of you can recognize your names. Um, we go to Alfred. Uh, the next one, please. And then there's blended learning training, the next one. Well, you can see he's not the perfect student, but that's what I like. I don't like perfect students. I always said, perfect is good, good is better. If you try to be perfect, it's, it's a time, really, trust me. Um, so Alfred was a good student, not perfect, good. Next one. So he hand in a video, and this is what I can see. And this is the first video they had to make about nice to meet you. It's just a simple movie. They tell something about themselves, but then we know them a little bit better. We know that they are able to make a movie, and we know that they are able to upload it. So that's step number one, get familiar with the system. And then we can move on. I give feedback to Alfred, he can read it, and I approve this assignment, right? Um, all right, another one. Go on. And this is another assignment, just a Word document. The student hand in the assignment. I read it, I give comments. And about giving comments, um, what I personally learned in my last session uh, with this project was about giving feedback and feed forward. Um, and maybe what I hope is that you remember from this afternoon from me, focus on feed forward for your students. It was really a shocking reminder for me. We, we give feedback a lot of times. Your students have to do something, we give feedback. All right, we start with the good things. But this, 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 you did not good. It was not very well. You can do better. It's very demotivating. Because it's something from the past. You cannot change it anymore. It's already done. What I do now is give feet forward. When they have to do something, I talk to my students. I communicate what I want and what I expect. If you don't communicate about expectations, you will never have the same goal. So now I talk to them on forehand. I give them tips, advice, and then they go on. That's a lot more in a positive way, stimulating your students. And learning has to be fun. It's, it's, you have to be glad that you can go to school. I have three rules in my classroom. It has to be fun, you have to be yourself, and you have to pay attention. Those three are my rules. And I always said I'm allergic for mobile phones, so I never want to see mobile phones. All right, next. Next. Sometimes you have to fill in a checklist. All right, next. Sometimes you can put a video on YouTube. This is from Matrin. You can go on. So I can go to YouTube with this link. I see the movie. And this was a very nice movie. And I like this part of the blended learning training because you have to go to the farmer and ask him questions. You have to go to a student and ask him questions. And asking good questions is one of the most difficult things in life. If you ask a question, people give an answer. My experience is that many times you have to ask two times, three times to get the right answer, to get the honest answer. So ask multiple questions in multiple and different ways. And this was a very nice movie because sometimes I saw a movie and then there was a student of mine 
interviewing the farmer in between the cows. Very nice environment, but the cows making a lot of noise, so I can't hear anything. But that's also something we can learn together. To make a good movie, pay notice to the sound, to the background, etc. So this is the farmer, this is a student. And um, when we talk about farmers and teachers, the students, I always said, stop working, sit down, drink tea, coffee, and talk to each other. We need each other. In the Netherlands, twice a year, I invite veterinarians, people who work in veterinary clinics, to come to our school. And I just ask them, what do you think of our students? What do you like? What do you dislike? How can we improve our education? We are not the people who can make it better. No, we have to listen to the farmers, to the people in the field. They know what they want. They know what they need. So we have to talk to each other. If you don't talk, if you don't drink tea or coffee, it's a waste of time. Um, so this is blended learning. You know it. All right, next. Um, what I really like about blended learning that you take your students seriously and they know it, they feel it. If you just start talking, 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 they fell asleep for sure. Um, challenge them. What I always say is you can do it in small steps. If you have a lot of small steps, it's a big step. So don't make it too difficult for yourself. It's, if you want to do big steps, it's scary, it's new. Everything which is new is scary. So make small steps, at the end it's all right. Don't try to be totally renewing, don't. What you already have done the last few years is good, it's good enough, but just add blended learning to improve, to learn by yourself. All right, thank you. This was my story. Maybe, sorry. No. Let me just add uh, the, this, because Hennington specific, specifically asked me also to um, tell something about the history of blended learning in the Netherlands. And I may surprise you, but it is not new. It's very old. When I came into uh, employment in, at, at Eris uh, in 1995, they were using blended learning. I was involved in blended learning. But yeah, I've got to remind you maybe that in 1995 there were no smartphones. There were no laptops. There were a few computers, not laptops, you know, desktop computers. You could carry them, but you needed a, you know, a, a cart to carry them along. Still, we used blended learning. How, how did we blend, use blended learning? One day a week in the practice, do assignments, come back the next day, we talk about it in classroom. There was blended learning on paper. You can do it. It's possible. But, you know, it's a little bit complicated, especially when the travel distances are long. Then it's not possible. Then later on, the, it was, was possible to use learning platforms with computer. But still, there were no, f no smartphones yet in, in 2010. It's something of, of, you know, the recent history. Um, so then, even then, the assignments were done on paper most of the times, but there was a electronic learning environment that was leading the students in doing the assignments. But they, they, they did it on paper. They were not carrying a laptop um, amidst the, the cows. You can imagine what will happen. And besides the fact that not every student had a laptop at that time yet. But nowadays, everybody has a smartphone in their pocket. Everybody has a high quality computer just in your pocket. Why shouldn't we use that, you know? So it has become different. So even for us, this history of using smartphones to do assignments in the practice is new. And this platform that BrainStart has developed is rather new. It's a few years, we have some experience, but the, the largest experience is in history is on paper, you know? So blended learning is not old, but the way you do it now is new. And I think that we are, this, this project is called an international collaboration project. It's not about 
you know, who is, has, is more advanced in, in, in development, it is more the fact that in networking, the East Africa will do it in Kenya, you see how it has been done in Ethiopia, and maybe you, you can have a look how it's done in the Netherlands. Well, the circumstances are different, but I can assure you the development is the same. So we are a little bit on the same page. Maybe we are a bit up front, but you know, development is development. Collaboration increases development. So maybe now, if you have any questions to Hans or me, then please. If not, I yes. Maybe I hand over the microphone to you. Elias, can you lead? Thank you, presenters. I have two sets of questions. Some questions are for the previous presenters. Then some questions are directed to Dr. Hans. Let me start with the Dr. Hans. When you took the stage, you were going to present to us the Netherlands experience, the blended learning. And I don't know, I seem to have missed this one. In the blended learning you presented, I did not see or I did not hear how assessment is carried out. How do you carry out assessment in the Netherlands using this uh, blended approach? Two, this. You know, for us in Africa, or in East Africa, we have a saying, education for all. I don't know whether that is the same case with Netherlands. Inclusivity in education. Does this platform cater for persons with disabilities? Then also, somewhere you did mention something about the assignments. How do you address the issue of plagiarism? You know, when students are time bad, there is this aspect of copy and paste. Using this platform, how do you address the issue of oh, plagiarism, copy and paste. This have you encountered in implementing blended learning? Oh, with you in the Netherlands, there are no challenges. Everything is okay. And if that is not the case, how have you been able to address these challenges? Thank you. The other questions my colleagues who ask questions. The questions regarding uh, the experience of Netherlands, it can be answered. But uh, with regard to the questions to the presentations by the Ugandans, we'll be having presentations by the Ethiopia group, the Kenya group. Th that, yeah, that would be better. I hope I can remember all your questions that you stated because my memory is not so good anymore as it used to be, uh, but anyway, forgive me. Um, as I said, uh, the experience in the Netherlands is, is quite old, but we didn't use any platform. Blended learning is not new, as I said, but we did it on paper. So the, the experience with blended learning is quite long. You know, its history is at least 30 years. Uh, but what we saw and that what the challenges are, and, th and probably the same challenges that you face is that what students need, no, what they definitely not need is getting theory in classroom, go back in the practice and see it's all different. And, they don't, and then they don't know what to do. Students are not yet at that, at that level that if they come to the farm and they can with all the theory that have, they have acquired from you, teachers, from me, teacher, to put it in practice. They can't. They don't have the ability to do that. So what we should do is let them take the practice back in the classroom and now I can deal with the practice, you know, in front of the students. And I can show them, this is how you do it. You know, 
this is how you address this problem. And yes, it is different as what you have read in books. Because animals are different. People are different. That's how we address it. Now that's the principle of blended learning. It's not only the system we use. The system is, you know, is, is supportive to what we do. The platform of blended learning is new. It's supportive of what we do. But the, I, the, um, the principle of blended learning is bring the practice in the classroom so that the teacher can use his sense to address the problems that the students are facing. And now they're coming back in the practice and they say, well, this is what we have discussed in the classroom. And while they have discussed it in the classroom, not only did they acquire knowledge, they also acquired a way of thinking, how to look at the practice, how to look at pro problems, and how to, in discussion, find a solution. And they know by then that they don't have a perfect solution. How do we assess the students? That's the second question you said. Well, assessment, you know, has to, of course, fit your institute. But I would say, what our experience is that we do assess students on paper or with you know assignments like in this in this platform, but it's it you know it's not fixed. I cannot I cannot say that um, that it is what is um, all the same because most of the times assessment is being uh, imposed by the government, even in our country. So you have to fulfill certain criteria of assessments. And the sad thing is that every four years, from 1995 on, when I started in, 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 in teaching in the classroom in the, in the Department of Animal Husbandry, they just had passed the first educational transformation imposed by the government. They said, well, you know, education is not good anymore. It has to change. So new education. Then we had a new education. And, but everybody came to the conclusion, well, this is not ideal. So let's do another one after four years. And now I'm, we are in 2022. We have had six educational transformations. After each transformation, assessment had to do def differently. So what we need is not you know, look at how are students being assessed, but more look like students, how, how they are being trained so that they could do any assessment. You know, so they have to re be robust. So, and I can assure you, what we did in, in developing the educational system, because we, are, we were a little bit stubborn in this help, whole process of new uh, development of education. We kept to our own principle of how to teach students. And I can assure you, they will, they will come through every assessment, no matter how you do it. Because it's not the assessment that's important, it is the training that's important. If these students are professionals, they can, they can pass every assessment, right? You know that I'm talking the truth as teachers. It's about the training, not about the assessment. So, I'm sorry, we don't have a fixed system of assessment, it's the government who changes it every now and then. Um, now, I missed one question. Oh, yeah, okay. Plagiarism. Oh, yeah, okay. Um, you, in my opinion, you were also asking about the problems we face. And what I do think is that as a school, you need to have a good relation with your students, also a good relationship with your farmer or the company where they do their internship. Because if you receive a student from our school, it's a big responsibility and it takes a lot of time for the farmer to train our students. And time is money. So in the beginning, the farmer has to put in a lot of effort, a lot of time, so a lot of money in our students. In, in a few weeks, our students is able to do a lot of work for this farmer and in that way, he pays the farmer back. But from the beginning, take our students serious and take time and effort for our students. And it's the same as veterinarian clinics. I think two or three times in my career at school, I went to a vet clinic where one of my students were, 
and I was not happy about how they treat my students, what they let them do, what they learn them. So then I just said to this veterinarian, I like you, you're a good man, but you're not good enough for my students. I will take my students away and bring her to another clinic. So we have to demand something from our corporations and from our farmers. They have to take our students seriously and they don't need them to do regular jobs or just to have free employments of employees. You know what I mean? All right, thank you. Uh, but, uh, can I come back to your question later about plagiarism? I need to know to <laughs> I answer you that, of course. And Oh, they say, oh, okay, okay. Um, right. First, plagiarism. Um, well, firstly, if they use blended learning and they hand in assignments, you know, the assignments are a way of uh, learning, not, not assessment, of course, because then we come to a certain assessment. If they would have been handing in something as an assessment and it is a, a, a paper or something, then it's simple. We let them hand it in in an uh, in, uh, electronic uh, learning environment that is connected with um, a system that can check for plagiarism. So it's as simple as that. And they have, if they have plagiarism, you know, they have a problem. So that's simple. If they do it, you know, with an assignment, if they could do it, I don't think they can do it because how can you? If they if they are on a farm and they're doing an assignment on that farm, and they copy uh, a, an, a, another assignment from another farm we would immediately see it. So, oh, well, it's a different video, it's a different presenter. So, I don't think it's a risk, you know, but I, but I think you're referring to, uh, uh, to assignments, and in that case, you need, an, and if it's a paper, you know, it's, if it's purely the assignment is on paper, okay, well then we could check it with an electronic system, if, if that's uh, the case. And, yes? Yes. Uh. concern about uh, cheating. Uh, you can have a formative assessment, so you can ask students to send videos so that cheating is not possible. And uh, you can, they can send assignments. Okay, cheating may be possible, but you can combine it with a uh, summative assessment where they are present in real in your class uh, at the end of the course. So you have, can have all the combination of assessments in, in, in order to avoid cheating. the issue of malpractice the type of questions you set matter for example if you came up with a case study it's very difficult to see the case study it is either you know or you don't know because it involves you reading or studying the extract that has been presented understand it then use your knowledge and skills which you acquired from the classroom to answer. So from there, you cannot cheat. Yeah. You know, we have uh, accredited some institutions to carry out assessment online. And uh, when we subjected those institutions to a test, we asked them to present to us sample questions, sample papers, when we look at the sample of papers, we did emphasize on the higher order questions. The use of a revised Bloom's taxonomy of evaluation. So that's where we're putting emphasis in. So you go for case studies mainly. Thank you. I think in, in the interest of time, since we are not given unlimited time, we need to limit ourselves. 
what I, I wanted to suggest is, I wanted to suggest, uh, Madam, for general issues, general questions about blended learning, the platform, and we'll have time, we have slaughter time for that purpose. If there is specific thing for the Nerez Atlantic experience, we can do it now. If it's only for the one, two, okay. Uh, thank you so much. Um, I'm interested in uh, assessment. As my colleague brought it up, and yes, I wanted to share our experience here, how we do assessment. Yes. Uh, as UPTEP, uh, the examination board that assesses all these competencies, what we normally do, we have a formative assessment that is done by the institutions. We have summative assessment. But uh, during the, the, the formative, the examination board does uh, inspection of uh, real life. So we just come on board and uh, to the institutions. We ensure that these students are practically doing what they are supposed to do. We do assessment on spot. Then at the end of exams, we also do practical examinations. And at that point, the examination body comes on board and uh, the assessment is done. And the students are, are, are marked on spot. So we are already doing branded learning, uh, training, much as it's a new terminology that for us we say it's competence-based training. That these students have been uh, trained practically they have been doing it, they have to go to the farms, we find them and we have to assess them. It's only that the approach, maybe the naming or what, but uh, this is what we are already doing. I want to thank you so much. So if the question is only for the nearest land experience. Yeah, thank you for the presentation, uh, but my uh, concern is about the linkage with the industry. I was just wondering whether uh, in the Netherlands, you are maybe enter into MOUs with the farms or you just send students to farms without prior engagement with the without farms prior? where here. Yeah. Sorry, with, without prior? I'm, I'm asking whether, you see, because the trend is running the industry is very difficult, where you are sending the students to do their practical. Now, you enter into MOUs with those uh, farms as an institute or we just send students without sending a entire engagement to the farm where they are going to work as interns or maybe do their practical life. Uh, thank you for that question. No, uh, absolutely, they cannot go to a farm. I'm good there because um, they are also they have, uh, you know, we, we are liable for the students. We, we, we can only uh, uh, get students to an attachment if they have, an, if we as, a, as an institute, as a college, have an agreement with the industry, with the farmer, that they take on the students and they take care for them for in, in a certain way and they also agree that they spend time with them to teach them. So that's, yes, we have an MEO, well, a, a formal agreement with every farmer for every student. They are not allowed to do any hour of practical training or, or practical attachment on a farm without such an agreement. If, and they have to make it themselves. They have themselves, they have to go to the farmer. The farmer has to be in a register, and, it, and the farmer is only coming in the register when the farmer has been applied for it to be a recognized training institution. And then somebody's gonna visit the farm and look if the farm environment is suitable for training because some are not. They just want to have, have uh, you know, a cheap help, a cheap laborer in the farm. Some have, some, some do that. And then if they are approved, then a student can go to the farm and say, well, I want to have an attachment here. Are you allowing this? And if the farmer allows, then the student has to go back and ask for bills to get a contract, get a formal contract with the farmer. is not allowed to go on uh, attachment. Yes? 
Is that answer question? Okay, thank you. I'm not a teacher, but I, I've, I've been following the discussions between Netherlands and, and us. Two things I've understood. One, assignment and assessment. Yes. And it looks like sometimes we treat the two as the same. But I think it is how we treat exams or whatever in, 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 in Kenya and Uganda and all that, where students are put in position to look at it as a punishment, to look at it as something you have to defend yourself. But I look at assignment as something that, I, if, if I'm learning, I want to prove that I've understood by showing to the one who's training me. So in that sense, I think, I think we have to change our attitude. First of all, do the students understand why they are learning? If I want to drive and somebody is showing me how to drive, I think it is in my interest that I really understand how to drive. And I want the instructor to really see what I'm doing. So. Most likely we have to, I think that the best thing for us is to start addressing the issue of assessment from a different angle. And, that, and I've been hearing this from most of you. Every time we are always saying the student, if we reject Walsam, you discourage the student. I've been hearing that. And, and we have been asking brains that how best can we uh, keep comments without rejecting Walsam. Anyway, so that is what I'm trying to say. Assessment, assignment. Two, the Kenyan examination system, and that is why the like, uh, always people are very scared that the student will copy from another one. If you want to copy, that means you don't understand why you are supposed to learn. So, and it's all about, it's something that we need to understand. Thank you, Joseph. I think uh, those of you who wanted to ask questions, uh, I will encourage you to, to take note of that. And after the Ethiopian and Kenyan presentation, you, have still, you will be still given time to ask your questions. And we'll continue this, this discussion after that. Now, for that, for uh, now, we, are, we will be breaking for lunch. And it will be for one hour. Since it is now 1.30, we can come back by 2.30. Is that OK? Before that, shall we give the, the Netherlands group Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> no, it's okay. Everything is done. I think we are going to the same place for where we had our break tea for the lunch. But let's keep time because we have, uh, we are because of the questions, we could not handle other, other ex uh, the, the Kenya and Ethiopian experiences. Yeah. So immediately after lunch, we shall come for that. Okay. Yeah. Enjoy your lunch. Thank you.
Chick A Youth TV Empowering You What you see on your screen are actually called pastures. Now, that's food for cattle. Mbalala is known for, and we're talking about Greater Mbalala District, is known for dairy production. And this is perhaps why Mbalala is referred to the land of milk and honey. Where we're standing is actually called Chilabo Farm, located here in Mbalala, a few kilometers from the city center. And why that? Shirabo Farm, we are told, is being developed to become Mbarara's next or Western Uganda's next demonstration farm for education purposes, for consultancy purposes. Now, when we talk about livestock, this is about to grow into a hub for livestock ecosystem. Today, we are hosting Mbarara University of Science and Technology students that are doing agriculture to come and get the practical feel of livestock. But before that, we should be able to take you through the farm and understand what more is done here. Now, you need to move with us. We do not know yet what is in, inside there, but what I can assure you is this is actually a full packed, action packed livestock coverage. And in case you've ever had that interest, then this is actually your chance. Sankara Biarhanga, Eat TV. Let's move. Thank you very much. You are still watching Eat TV. We promised, and yes, this is now the moment of truth. I told you we didn't know anything about Chilabo Farm, but God is on our side, and trust me, we are about to be getting to know more. Joining me at the farm now, what you see on your screen, uh, it's where we are standing. I would say, in my layman's language, that those are young pastures. <laughs> but we should be able to get the right term from the experts. Joining me on the set uh, is, I prefer calling you Comrade Tom. If you could start with you saying hi to the viewer. Yeah, the viewers of ATV, you are welcome to this segment uh, where we are at Chirabo Agukacho Practical Training Farm. Call it Chirabo Farm. Yes. Uh, we are located in Bara City, mm. Kachika Division, mm. and the village called Kafungo, just five miles on Iwanda Road, right from the city center. Mm. So we are here, and we want you to go with us as we explore what is behind us. But this is a three-acre farm mm. that has a number of enterprises. One of the enterprises is a zero grazing unit where we keep dairy cows. We have a pigger unit on the farm. We have rabbitry, we have poultry, and we have other crops that we grow, including where we are standing right now. This is a pasture establishment garden, and behind us we have even grown up pastures. So today we are here to show you what is behind here and to get you into the picture of real agriculture and that is urban agriculture. Don't tell me you don't have land. You can beat on one acre. You can beat on uh, 100 by 100. 50 by 100, you can do something. So, welcome to Chirabo Farm. Uh, today, we are hosting a team of students with their lecturers from Barra University of Science and Technology. Those who are doing agriculture and mainly livestock section. So, we shall take them through and monetization today. Mm. We shall look at the pastures, including where we are standing. Mm. How do you prepare the land? How do you plant? How do you uh, protect the crop against the pests mm. and diseases? Mm. And how do you harvest? Mm. And also preserve? Ah. And eventually, how do you feed your cows? Okay. Because 
feeding is milk for us. If we are feeding the dairy cows. Yes. Yes. Okay, now this is actually going to answer why Mbarara is called land of milk and honey. There's a lot that contributes to that statement. Now let's roll. We are touring Chilabo Farm. Students, you are most welcome to our farm. Uh, it's a farm. Many people call it Chirabo Farm because Chirabo is our trade name. Yes, we are Chirabo Practical Agriculture Training Farm and our innovation is a hub. But we simply call it Chirabo Farm. But we do practical agriculture training and we are innovate. As you will see, uh, the day, I think we have about seven to eight hours here, and uh, we shall go through a number of enterprises, but our focus today is going to be on animal nutrition. And to be specific about feeding the cows and also feeding the pigs. Though we have birds, we also have rabbits. So we shall talk about all that. So you are most welcome and um, uh, be attentive because I want to learn from you. My team needs to learn from you because you are from the academic institution. You are into the real uh, <coughs> learning, you know, um, uh, uh, lecture uh, theaters and you, the way you do it in, in, in lecture rooms maybe is different the way we do it here. So let us learn from each other. As you are coordinator say, today is a special day for us to host you, and uh, I think we are privileged to host not any other university, but Mbara University of Science and Technology. I think you guys you deserve clap for yourselves. Thank you for coming. because continue for like one hour so that after lunch we don't stay here you get me I think that would be better let's come back I can uh, the Kenyans and the Ethiopians organize themselves You ask him. He is the one who can handle, help you. Okay, Kenya, are you ready? Kenya, we are starting with Kenyans. Kenya, are you ready? Who? Ah, uh, uh, no, we are starting with you. There's already no. He's also having issues. Ah, <laughs> uh, uh, but I told, I told God to come back. Kenya, Kenya, where are you? No, let's go. Let us finish this thing, then we go. Let us finish. So we can't waste time waiting for people on the line. Yes, let's finish first. We, after lunch, we can only other people can go. Then us, we shall remain for the meeting with these national stakeholders, these ministries. Yeah, it's only us. Other people will go. Eh? Oh, if Kenya is delaying, can we get on with the Ethiopian? Uh, do you have your charger? 
you can get the U USB port. You get the USB cable. Let him bring his USB cable and he'll transfer it on your yeah. Sorry. I think we Kenyans are waiting. Ethiopians we are waiting. Down to do what? Is that where the line is? Yeah, we want to make the presentation short so that we get time for people to get out early. It's already getting late. We are already coming to 2. So we want by 4, by 4 p.m., 4.30, I think we should be done. So we leave our guests who have come from very far to travel early. Kenya is ready. Eh? Oh, it's up. It's Are you done? You can start. Eh? Yeah, you, you, you start. Are you, you are projecting. Yeah, let him. Hold on a bit. We are still organizing ourselves. We will, uh, after here, I think after this presentation, we are going to have a plenary. Once we discuss, after the plenary, and we take lunch. Other team members may may wish to leave, but uh, we request the national uh, 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 representatives, like from the ministries, to hold on a bit. We are going to have a brief meeting. It was not going to also take long. I would say like 30 minutes. <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you know me. Okay, fine. Sorry. <laughs> I will be brief. <laughs> Okay, we are still waiting for Ethiopia. They are organizing themselves. And let's keep the presentation precise. afternoon. I think let me try my part on behalf of Ethiopia. Uh, in my presentation, I will make the blended training in two, two parts. One is in terms of trainers training and the other is in terms of the DDA, the dairy the Delta Dairy Academy. When I come to the first, it is the, pro, the profile of the institutions taking part in this earned project. The first is my institution, TVTI. By the way, TVTI is a bit unstable in its name. Initially, it was Federal Tibetan Institute. Later on, it was 
promoted to Ethiopian Technical University, and now it is Technical and Vocational Training Institute. Nevertheless, the mandate is not yet changed. Its mandate is just to train Tibet teachers, both at the undergraduate and graduate levels. Was wrong. And the next is Bure Agricultural Polytechnic College. It is located somewhere 450 kilometers from northwest of Addis, the capital of Ethiopia. And Poleta Polytechnic College is located west of Addis, some 40 kilometers. With this, I will proceed to blended daily, daily training for trainers. In this case, the statistics is that participants from Bure were seven but the plan was to train eight. And in the case of Holeta, the plan was eight, and eight of them participated in the training. As we come to the certification, from Bure, two of the seven participants are certified, and from Holeta, one of the eight participants are certified. When we say, when we consider about those who completed the training but not certified in Bure, five are not certified because some of them did not complete their assignments on the specified time. And in Holeta, seven of eight did not complete or are not certified because the second batch did not complete the course. It is still on training. But three of them from the first are not certified because, because they were not punctual in submitting their assignments. The good lessons these training of trainers have acquired is that they were able to combine theory and practical lessons. Their ability is enhanced in, the, in combining the two components, improved communication skills, enhanced teamwork, working together among their friends, and increased regional networks just the visits we did in Kenya, the visit we are doing here now, and during the inception workshop in Ethiopia, these visiting practices increased the network we have among these three East African countries. Reduced dependence in ICT material utilization or self-regulated training at the start Many of the participants were less skilled in utilizing ICT materials, but as time goes, as they progress into the learning process, it is, it is claimed that they started regulating themselves, particularly in using ICT materials. And these trainers, these trained trainers, again, have become, have become good references good models for the other instructors, for the other trainers in their respective agricultural polytechnic colleges. The problems we have here, I don't know where the title goes, delays in ICT learning material. This was at the start, in fact, at the start of the project. Lack of the required commitment from 
the participants from the trainers and that is why because of this problem that most of this is due to lack of commitment training schedule was late late in the day that is about 5 p.m. in the afternoon 6 p.m. in the afternoon and will easily get dark and that was not possible particularly for female trainers to fully participate in the training Internet breakdowns, this is usual. And that was all about the trainers. Now when we come to the Delta Dairy Academy, the statistics in Bure, the plan was to train 42 students, but in reality, they got 23. And in Holeta, who trained 76 participants, nevertheless, in the actual, on the reality, they trained 27 <laughs> participants, students. And when I go to the learn, lessons learned from the pilot studies point of view, from the students' point of view, I mean, in one hand, I see the skill development, their ability of utilizing the ICT materials is said to be increased compared from the start. Self-confidence in what they are doing, in loading, uploading, or in sharing different types of the, the commerces, or in doing the exercises combined from the and things, and things confidence was raised. Residue dependence on the trainer at the start, the, this dependence reduced. They become independent in manipulating these things. In other communication skills, communication with the platform, communication within themselves, communication with the coach, and so on. Also, to their ability of combining the theory and the practice in the classroom, much theory, when they are sent to the field to do the assignments, they are more the practical, and therefore, their ability of combining the two is enhancing, is getting better and better. And the other one is adoption of the platform, that is learning the platform initially at the start. was difficult to get access to the platform, but later on, as time goes, as their involvement increased, then they easily able to access the platform. And when I come to the problems at the start, creation of their own emails or account was a difficult task. They will enter into, they will create, they will easily forget, create, easily forget, even forgetting their own respective password and so on where problems at the start. Delayed assignment submissions, that is, students like their teachers were not punctual, were not conscious of the time aspect, and unable to upload, particularly using their smartphones, it is found to upload large size documents, unable to edit them, and at the same time, unable to resize their respective documents. This is a problem in contact experience. And too many exercises from the platform, too many exercises were not matched to the existing curriculum, particularly when we compare the exercises to the level type of students, much mismatch was there. But when we compare the exercises with the bachelor level students, that was okay. That was 
So again, again, the modules of the platform to the labels, to the labels, labels of the students was not appropriate because it goes beyond their capacity, beyond their ability. Nevertheless, modules to our basic students were appropriate. At the same time, smartphones, in our case, some 72 smartphones were both successful. We are not suitable to edit and something like that. This is one of the problems we talk And internet breakdown, like the others, is a problem. The way forward may have linkage shall be created with other institutions just to make it sustainable, to make this blended training sustainable. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, I thought you were asleep. It's good you are awake. So I'm called Okeno Tobias. I'll be representing the Kenyan team in the presentation. And uh, these are the institutions uh, in this program. One is Ijaton. Then we have the DTI. I think they introduced themselves. Then we have Bukura, uh, Aldai. Eldoret National Polytechnic, which is the lead team, and then Baraton University. So I'll make a presentation on the experiences of the trainees uh, from our country. These are the numbers, and these numbers will come to play a role at some particular point. So we felt that it is good to show that, okay, how many students do we have within our institutions that will be able to use uh, the platform. So those are students who are undertaking agriculture and with dairy components in it. All these institutions are also located in Rift Valley and that means Rift Valley is a nerve center for dairy production in Kenya. Yeah? Oh, Bukura is in Western. Oh, but we, we have absorbed them. <laughs> so how, how do we train? Generally, this is how we train lectures, which can be face-to-face -face or it can be online, which came about after the, during the corona. Eh? People moved from physical to the online one, but to me, it is still face-to-face. -face. Reading, because of those numbers I talked about, demonstrations came to play a role. Rather than doing practicals, I can't get all number of animals required, 
So there's I'll do and they see. But we always say that learning by doing is the best, eh? because retention rate is high. So the platform we can use to do several areas that is ranging from certificate to bachelor's, and this is how we train, 6 to 40 for the universities and 70, 30 for the technical training institutions, and then they can proceed upwards. So with those numbers, the question comes, where does the practical aspect go to? You remember what we had in the farm we visited yesterday? The guy said that, okay, if you ask them the botanical names, everything they can describe. But go tell them to go, tell them to show you. They don't know. That is what demonstration and theory is always about. So there comes a problem or a challenge with the uh, practicals. For the teachers in the house, you know that somebody had mentioned, I think he mentioned that when you do participatory teaching or training, the retention rate is always very high as compared to the passive. So you can see where the lecture is and where the demonstration is. So that's where blended comings in and the project. So through the blended, where we can combine those, the online, the, phys the physical, we come up with something there where we, it is like having a juice which is mixed with all several things eh, in terms of training and the platforms comes to play. And we have used it during the piloting time with our students who are doing several things in our various institutions. So what were their experiences? This is what they said, not us. One, they like it because it was helping them to interact with the animals better. For the demonstration which we used to do, it is me interacting with the animals and not the students, isn't it? With them, they are there to see. The way you are seeing me now, I'm the one interacting with the, with the systems here, eh? with you, I'm demonstrating to you. Yeah, that is how it always works. And that improves their understanding. If you look at the content in the platform, the practicals and the theories are well aligned. That is what they say. And then uh, it enhanced teamwork. Because remember those numbers. You, it, it might be difficult to work with each and every individual. And you can might be difficult also to handle animals individually. So if you are to do some weighing, you need somebody maybe to restrain the animal and somebody to put the tape across if you are using a weighing band. Eh? So it encourages teamwork. When they are going to the farm outside there, you remember the students, uh, I think, uh, from uh, Moost, who demonstrated today. They were working in teams. Eh? It was not a one-man show or a one-woman show. Then emphasis on learning, learning by doing. And I can relate this with better understanding. Then they learn at their own pace. Uh, we were just discussing during the break that in most cases in the timetables we have time for practicals. But we don't have the same number of animals. So if we can so they found that one to be good for them. Use of mobile phones or gadgets, not just for social, but also learning activities. So, and I think that had been talked about before. And they were saying that the platform is also user-friendly. Challenges. Internet access. You saw what happened in the morning during the first presentation? Solutions here which we have to think about, especially the platform uh, owners. The Raspberry Pi. I think these are interesting ones. Eh? This way you can connect one gadget without access to internet. I think and people can access that information. Use of flash disks, getting the content from online. If they are going to the farm, they can have it on the on the flash disk, tap it somewhere, and they will be able to go to work and maybe the CDs. Then the question of electronic gadgets. Not all students have uh, the, can we say the smart mobile phones. All of them could be having phones, but not all of them could be having smart phones. But in Kenya, I think there is some organization which is, which is giving these students this on loan, eh? so that could be a leeway. Uh, the next challenge was about the wrong attachment. I have not checked of late if this has been corrected, but we have raised it a lot. If I attach a document and then realize that it is a wrong one, 
I cannot withdraw it so that I attach a document on the platform. So that should be noted. Then flex, flexible evaluation models. It had been mentioned in the morning. I, I remember him talking about the evaluations and, and, all, and all that. And some people had also mentioned that. Because you might find that in that one particular module, maybe there are things that the students have done right, and there are things that they have not done right. I should be able to accept whatever they have done right, and then they just do the corrections on what has not been done right. But there are only two alternatives. Either accept or reject. Lessons learned. Uh, trainees understand. Trainees can undertake practicals anywhere, like what we saw in the morning. They can do it without their teachers. It is a risk to, to teachers, but it is encouraging because they might not need us, since they, but they need us. Eh? I'm just joking. Eh? Then the use of mobile phones for learning and all that. Then we also looked at it beyond that. All along we have been talking of brain drain. Brain drain is where brain need to, you don't need to pay my flight to come here. And we'll do it theoretically and practically. Yes, and I don't need to abandon Egerton. I don't need to resign. Eh? I'm not looking for a job. I have one, but uh, <laughs> just trying to expand. Then, you remember the mismatch we were talking about just in the farm yesterday? The students know them theoretically, but practically they don't know. So it seems, and I heard people saying there is a mismatch between the way we train and what the market wants. Through this, we are involving the market. There was a component of MOUs. You remember that? You remember those training schools? They should be, we should see on how to involve them so that we have what we can call a mix match. It's not only the you as the lecturer or as the trainer, but the guy is also participating. So that tomorrow when he picks the student or the trainee, he doesn't come back and tell us that, no, you guys bring us only theoretical guys. Because he was also part of the mix. So that will solve that problem. Recommendation. It is fle a flexible tool. This is what the student said. DAD platform is not only a flexible tool to you for us, but also help us to sharpen our practical skills. There is theoretical component and they can do there. So they were saying, please adopt it and expand to other areas beyond the area. Then the last one, this is now from the trainer's point of view. It enhances practical training in the face of increasing student numbers I'm sure if I give uh, the Dutch guys 30 students, they are saying that is a big class. We handle hundreds. So that's why the trainers feel that, because this and the numbers will continue increasing. The population growth in Africa is increasing. And where do they go? At the end of the day, they must have some skills, isn't it? So it can help us here. And diminishing training resources. If you look at the number of training resources we have now, or the quantity, they are always going down. Or the government cannot keep in pace with the number of students in terms of practical resources. But through this, we can tap some outside there, like those private farms that we went to and those training schools. With those many remarks, thank you, Asante Nisana. earlier that let's finish this thing now so that uh, we take lunch then people will move which will remain for a meeting our mini meeting 
you want to handle the plenary now shall we ask uh, obran to come forward umran is not around but you see he was the one who will hand umran to handle the plenary passage okay Thank you very much. I've learned a number of things from the presentations and I wanted to share my take on that. One is that we are in curriculum or we are pairing the learners, our graduates, to be able to subdue the problems they face now and in the future. So how we prepare them tells us a lot. And I want to thank and the project, our colleagues from Ethiopia, our colleagues from Uganda, and our colleagues from Kenya for the effort they have made. But we would like also to know that they are two ways. There is the traditional way of teaching and I call it the pedagogy of oppression where the teacher knows it all and comes and tells you do this, do that, do this and then he, at the end he asks and you reproduce what he has told you. That is pedagogy of oppression and we are, in Uganda we have done it for many years. In Kenya maybe you are better. Now, blended learning comes in as a new approach, which is we are inviting the learners, the teachers, market standards, or the farmers and industry to contribute to knowledge creation. And there, that mix up is what we are calling blended learning. And we will need all of us to be at that level. That it is a mix. The learner knows something and will come and tell you what he or she knows. Industry will come or the market standards will come and tell you the learners you are producing should meet these standards. And the teacher, you come with the concepts that you want to deliver or the lecturer. So in that way it takes us to competence based. One person asked me to talk about competence based. For me I know it as what can you do according to the market standards. If you can if you don't know according to the market standard you are not in competence based. So if it is the beaking Oh, let us say castration in the diary if we want to castrate the bulls that the diary animals have produced. Or if we want to do testing milk for abnormalities, you must do it according to the market standards. So if I'm training you, I want you to do it as they do it in the market. And that's how the blended learning will come. You take the learners to the actual milking collection center and they do the platform tests. Practically, they observe what the market wants. And then for you, you know, the concept is platform tests. The teacher knows that. The learners share their experiences with you. If they come out and they have been able to acquire that competence, then we are good to go. You can now use face-to-face -face because you have taken them there. They are with the farmers or the milk king collection center and you have the books there. They are reading the theory as well as they are doing the practice. But may, you can may, do sir, a simulation. Uh, we may also need to give chance to others. So if you can... Yeah, so I'm su in summary... Yeah. I'm saying blended learning is not a form of assessment. 
It is just part of the mix of training. Like I can use blackboard training, I can use lecture method, I can do a demonstration. Blended learning just mixes the face-to-face -face approach with the digital technology. Thank you. That, that was a remark. If there are any questions, to, okay. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, presenters. I just have a few concerns. One, uh, given like the rural experience that we have in terms of technology, and particularly electricity, where we need to charge these gadgets uh, oftenly as we use, and you know, uh, these phones we are talking about, the battery expiry or duration is so low in terms of time. Have you had an experience of this as a challenge by, uh, by, by the students that maybe they don't have the charging materials? Uh, do you then have a solution to that, like usage of the solar system and so on and so forth? I wanted to get that experience whether it has been there. Two is about, uh, I didn't get or hear any of the presenters mentioning about what has been your experience in terms of that? When you train them to use these gadgets, you have challenges that even sometimes the students that are supposed to use these facilities uh, fail to use them in the, uh, the trained norm. The third one, and uh, more important to me, is uh, like I say, I head the Tebedera Training School, which is under their development authority, which is under Ministry of Agriculture in Uganda. Uh, I have seen very interesting experiences being shared here. When will I, when will I, and when will my school be brought on board to actually benefit from this? Given that we train, and uh, when we train our students, skill them, we send them out there, some of them start cottage industries, they make the, the, the milk products, and we need to follow them because this is a very fast uh, system of following and you get an immediate feedback. So that is my concern when am I being brought on board. Thank you very much. Thank you. First, first I'll, I'll give chance to the to, to the university now. Okay. Uh, thank you so much for the The previous presentations. If I got it properly, one of the advantages that were presented is that it is cheaper to, to manage or to even to, to dispense. But I have some reservations on the cheapness of uh, the online, especially uh, that uh, one, if you, the whole institution is undertaking this, there is a lot that the administration is spending in terms of data, in terms of maintaining the infrastructure, if it is available. I'll give an example. Just recently, during COVID time, we tried to have a virtual graduation where I invited just a few students on the ground but it ended up being more expensive to us than the common graduation. 
So I don't think even this blended learning, we can put it as a, a very big, uh, uh, that it is actually less or least expensive. It is more, it can be effective, but I believe it has quite a number of expenses that are hidden. Thank you. Other question first, I'll give a chance to the guests to our guests. But I ex Daniel, I, I expect answers, f not questions from you. <laughs> oh, I, I, I will make both. Thank you very much. My name is Bernard Law from Kenya. First, uh, the questions the first one is uh, Ethiopia's case. We presented and we said that we bought some gadgets, but they were not usable. So I wondered how that was possible, the, the gadgets were the, which were bought. Second question, when we become contributors to the platform, the online blended platform, by creating content, how does that play into the mechanism that we saw here of the amount of money that becomes payable? Because now the content that will be available will be both content that is created, of course, by the Daily Delta Academy as creators, and some of us having added content. Can that be considered? Finally, two important comments, then I'll be done. The first one is about the sensitivity of the government and the private sector as people who should count themselves part and parcel of the training program so that they no longer play the role of always ping pointing fingers to say that we are bringing out half-big students while they're not contributing anything. Good examples are companies such as Coca-Cola in some places or even in Germany when you talk about BMW. There are things that they sponsor number of students through the training programs in different German universities. That is not the same case here in Africa and I think it is high time we began to speak to this issue that they should count themselves at part and parcel of the training program. Lastly, Let me leave it there. Thank you. Thank you. I, I, I think let, let us finish this one and come back second round. Is that okay? So, I, I, in fact, I was reminded of one, one saying. Into that one. Some people say it is. Uh, oh, I forget that name. They say, you may have heard about that. If you find. Education to be expensive. Try no ignorance. Let us keep this one in our minds. So I will come. So I will come second round. Second round, but the response. Yes, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I wanted to give a comment that could be a response to one of the questions raised about costs and maybe the preliminary training to the users of maybe the smartphones, and also even the one of uh, smartphones that never worked. Uh, in our institution, that is the Eldoret National Polytechnic, we have separately invested in infrastructure, ICT infrastructure, and we have uh, a good bandwidth that supports the normal operations. So in this context, a Tivet institution or a university for that case is ought to have invested in ICT basically so that the infrastructural development to support this uh, blended learning is not loaded on the blended learning and it should not appear as a cost on the blended learning alone. So it is like also when um, you are making your meal, you will not cost your meal together with the basic infrastructure of your kitchen and then equate that meal to be very expensive. There are some basic preliminaries that you, you, you ought to have done because there are other things that leverage on this ICT infrastructure in the first place. Otherwise, also on the issues of uh, training, uh, it is absurd that even in some scenarios, we learn from these people how to use our phones. Therefore, that is also supposed to take advantage of the group approach in uh, blended learning so that there are some disadvantaged learners 
who may not have interacted with smartphones and one way or another the project has afforded them smartphones will work closely with the ones who have been using smartphones and get to learn so that they are up to pace with where they are starting their learning from. I'm greatly informed by this because one time before I was employed by government I worked in a private high cost school somewhere in Kisumu in Kenya and I was teaching ICT to a standard one class. One boy told me, teacher, yesterday they sold our old computer and they bought me a new one. Now, this is a six year old who has used a computer until the computer is old. And they have now replaced this old computer. While me, my own experience was, I saw a computer the first time I reported to college. We were living in diverse worlds. So it meant that I could also get another standard three who has little knowledge and get the standard one to show that one how to operate that machine. So some of those preliminary activities can be done within the learners and within the environment. Otherwise, if it is issues ICT, they can be handled at some uh, high, slightly administrative level. Also, issues of uh, bundles and their time. Now, with the in infrastructure that exists in school, in our own setup, we have hotspots within the institutions where the, inst the students access free internet. Therefore, anything they would do, if there is any uploading, they will go to the field, take the photographs, then when they are within the precincts of the institution, upload whatever is expected of them. Therefore, it ca you cannot look at it. Even our students decided at one point to demand that we buy them airtime. But when we gave them the same logic, that come and use the available inter internet in the institution, that question fizzled out. Otherwise, there will always be pressure for more and more resources anytime, but then the resources we have, have they are limited. So we cannot provide beyond. So I think uh, that was the approach in our institution. It could be different elsewhere, but also even on the phones issue, uh, I remember when I was a small boy, I was taught how to, another colleague of mine told me how to, to make a punch out of my fingers, how to rearrange them so that when you are fighting, you don't get hurt. That was from a colleague, a, a, a toddler like me. And uh, those are things, there is a lot of learning that takes place within the groups, and they will be able to update each other on the ICT techniques. Thank you. Yeah, maybe uh, on behalf of other Kenyan institutions, you can tell us when you collect school fees on an annual basis, on average, in the TVETs, how much is that? And, okay. then, and then somebody will assist you to convert it into euros. So be ready uh, in Kenya shillings. Okay, yeah, our college, the fees we charge is regulated by government. Each student, or okay, the government caps the fees at 56,420 Kenya shillings. You convert to Somebody could be converting. Then that... Uh -huh. Wait. 100 and... Dollars or euros. So that is 188. That is per year. 56,000 so Kenya shillings is how much in euros so that the other countries... It is 56,000 56,420 Kenya shillings by year. By year. Yes. Huh? So 470? That is 470 euros. Now, uh, one of the pillars of Gwaja, our Gwaja, Before you, I, I, I have, so 470 euros, euros. is that right? Yes. By year. By year. Now, um, the, 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 the blended learning was asking for 55 euros. Let me just use the, the right figure. 55 euros per student per year. How much is that? 55 euros in an annual basis. Yes. How much? No, he's, ask, he's supposed to convert so that we compare. It is 470 euros. Is that right? Yeah. Yes.
Yeah, but I wanted just to bring out the figure to see how, how, how much a student can pay, is supposed to pay for the blended learning. But it is it taking a lot of time to get 55, Euro, 55 euros in Kenya shilling. I mean, no, we are talking about 400. Okay, it's all right. So 470 euros and it is 55 euros per year. Okay? Now, universities pay double. Actually, the university, like Ikaton University, they pay now instead of 400, it's 1,000 euros, something like that. And you're supposed to pay 55 euros for the blended learning. I'm just trying to bring out how small the figure is, although you're saying it is for all the, all the courses, but, but in, in terms of, of, of the figure, it is quite small, isn't it? Okay. This, this kind of discussion can come later, especially when we have meeting with... Uh, the officials. After this plenary, there will be an official meeting. So I mean, that, would, that will help discussing in detail each aspect of uh, the blended learning. Yeah, please. So uh, having said that our fees is 56,420, 56, let me reduce, uh, tone down, because it can be a scare. Out of this, the government pays 30,000 for a student and uh, the student pays 26,420. That is enable to, so that to increase access, so that not to deny those who cannot afford to train. So I think I need to dispel that so that any, any foreigner who would wish to come to Kenya still feels free to come, but they don't also get the government support when they come, so the support is for Kenyans. Otherwise, that is uh, our fees, it is not very expensive, thank you. Any experience with regard to battery, the, the batteries, and that was raised by, my, my, by one, one of the colleagues. Any problem that was faced, and can you give us experience of how that was solved? No? Okay. About battery, I will come to you. I just wanted to hear if there was... And hope this type of experience will continue. After graduation, demonstrations, 